This is Against the Storm. Uh, this game was recommended to me by one of my co-workers, uh, Zoe McClatchy, who is into the same kind of like colony building type game that I am. You know, like the thing that makes me a big fan of RimWorld and Banished and Dice Legacy. Uh, this game is allegedly going to fulfill some of the same sort of, I don't know, player fantasies uh, as those games. I think she didn't actually say that. That's just the impression that I got from the way she described the game. So I'm interested in seeing what this game is about. I have not played it at all yet. So we're going to be discovering this together. cycle of destruction ravaging everything in its path. The only safe haven is the smoldering city where the mysterious scorched queen reigns. You are one of her viceroys, a pioneer sent into the wilds, tasked with establishing new settlements and acquiring valuable resources for the crown. Your goal is to help rebuild the smoldering city and secure the future of the Queen's subjects. You know, it just occurred to me, this might not actually be like, say, RimWorld, because uh, as I understand it, it has more of a roguelike structure, which means we'll probably be building things that we intend to lose, uh, <laughs> rather than building things that are supposed to last forever, which is a pretty big difference. Um, so yeah, let's... Use WASD to control the camera. Sweet. Neglecting your village will increase the queen's impatience and bring her wrath down upon you. Okay, we'll have to keep track of that. What else? Fulfilling your duties will increase the town's reputation and unlock new buildings. Okay. So we're introducing each piece of the HUD and explaining it as we go. Oh, so I've already got a reward. Your renown grows. You can now pick one of the available blueprints that the queen offers you. So I can get a woodcutter's camp. Well, let's grab that then. So I can press space to resume when I'm paused. Build a woodcutter's camp and explore the forest. You have to keep the fire going at all times. Okay. So how do I build... Oh, hello. Wait. I've got humans, beavers, and lizards. This game has beavers. So I will love it. That's um, <laughs> just something that you can always assume. Okay, so camps, roads, housing, decorations. How do I... Ah, woodcutter's camp. Okay, so I'm going to build a woodcutter's camp. And it's got an area around it. I guess, do I want to get access to these clearings? Does that mean I want to build it in a place where it can, like cut through a wall of trees let's try building it here and see what happens oh and I could have pressed R to rotate it but I didn't okay so looks like my beaver is going to be building that so we have multiple beavers here oh yeah we have three humans three beavers and three lizards okay so oh, I can move this if I want to. That's interesting. And then I can decide who works here? Yeah. Wait, why am I having a human work there? Obviously, beavers should be my woodcutters. But, you know, we want to have a, like a, a diverse workplace. So we'll get multiple species in there. Okay, so it looks like they're chopping the wood around it kind of randomly, which is what you expect from a colony sim. I don't know what the lizards are going to be good at. What else can I build? Oh, mark trees for harvesting. So, like, if I want them to specifically cut through the trees, it will open the way into this space or into that space. Then I can do that. I can target them. But if I don't, they'll just chop whatever random trees happen to be around, I guess. All right. So, oh, wait, I got a letter. What is this? orders. Oh, okay. So I need to build two woodcutters camps and collect a certain amount of wood. I need to cut through the forest to discover two glades. And then when I do these things, I get these rewards. Okay, so I'm so I'm working for the queen. The queen is a distant person who is defining objectives for me. 
and I'm trying to accomplish those objectives. Okay, well, let's build a second woodcutter's camp. And I don't want to build it on top of this cabbagey stuff or this flowery stuff, because I don't know if that stuff's important. Let's build it there. And then maybe this will be the one that's run by lizards. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, so it's giving me advice to assign more woodcutters, and so I think to, before I can do that, I need to build another camp. I like, by the way, how... Oh, oh, the orders that I've been given, by the way. Those are, those are showing up behind my head here. Let me move my head so you can see. Okay, so I've completed the two woodcutters camps that I need. Alright, so this is the lizardy one. And then let me mark some more trees for cutting. Lead into this little glade here. I assume that that's what these cloudy things are, that these are glades. So we just need to open the door to two glades in order to succeed at that one. But we have completed this. Let's deliver our prize. So our prize was three beavers. So we've got some more beavers now. And we've got... Oh, I can pick a new building. I've been... Ooh, a forager's camp. Okay, sure. Okay, so yeah, so the forager can pick up cabbages. So, so I was right not to try to, to... To avoid covering up the cabbages. So let's build that right there. Though actually, I'm wondering if... I don't know what the beavers are good at. Rain punk technology? Okay, I don't know what I don't know what rain punk technology is, but I'm on board. Anything with punk on it is gonna be the best. The thing it didn't say was that beavers are better at chopping wood, and so I'm not going to, you know, I I think it would be probably uh, problematically stereotyping if I tried to say that beavers uh, were the only ones who could chop wood. But okay, so but I do have some extra beavers here. So this this slot can only be taken by a human. Interesting. So are humans just particularly good foragers? It says this worker has a plus 10% chance to produce twice as much. So I guess maybe so? Okay, so we still haven't opened enough glades yet, but we do have food supplies here. So we've just completed that. And then this is saying it wants me to make planks and bricks and fabric. I don't know how to make planks and bricks and fabric. But, ooh, a workstation. Maybe this is where I can do it. Yes, this is exactly what I can do. So, now I can make a crude workstation. Ooh, we've opened a glade. Nice. So, this has got stormbird nest and a clay deposit. So, there's a, if I got a stonecutter's camp. I can claim that clay deposit. So I'm going to do that. Oh, meanwhile, I need to assign somebody to work here. I guess some beavers. So I've got wood. So I can make planks out of the wood. And I guess that's it. Like, is it just going to... Yeah, so I guess as long as all of these activities are active, they're just going to make planks into wood and stuff, and I guess I can narrow them down if I want to. Right now there's only one thing they can do. I don't have any clay, and I don't have any whatever this is, plant fiber yet. Okay, one thing I thought was, I assumed that these were going to go away faster, but it looks like 54 of 60. Okay, so each of these things can be used a bunch of times. Similarly, how much clay is there here? 20. There's 20 clay there. So yeah, so it is going to be worthwhile to build this thing. Do I have enough workers though? It just occurred to me. I might have assigned all of my characters. If there's nobody left to build this, maybe it's worth like taking the lizard off. Or... No, I still... I do have a free lizard. Why is this not being constructed? Oh, wait. Oh, it needs parts. It needs wood, which I have, but it also needs parts. So it looks like they're probably delivering wood to it. But I don't know where I get parts. 
Where do I get parts? I was thinking maybe this would award me parts, but no. I get parts for completing building blocks, but I can't complete building blocks until I get parts? Like, how do I... I'm confused. Let's see. What, what's my next order? If I get an ancient tablet, then they'll reward me with some stuff. Okay. Stealthy Assassin wants to know where they can get this game. Uh, I think I got this on Steam. No, wait, no. I think it might be an Epic. I think I might have gotten it at the Epic Store. So yeah, look at the Epic Store. I think that's probably where this is. Um... Okay, yeah, so I feel like I might be stuck in a little bit of a loop here. I've got enough wood, but do I have... Do I have parts? I don't see parts. Unless... Oh, oh, I do have parts right here. Oh, okay, so whoever's transporting stuff over here, they're just delaying getting parts. It's not that I don't have them. It's somebody's got to carry them over, and they're going to carry over all the wood first. That makes sense. Okay, so I've got this resource display where I can sort of click on categories of things. And it looks like things that are going up... Okay, so I think this arrow means that I'm getting more of this over time. The fact there's no arrow here means that I'm stabilizing. I'm probably cutting down trees about as fast as I'm um, using wood. So I think that's why, and then this food is going down. So I'm eating food faster than I'm creating food. Okay, so I've made a bunch of planks. Oh, oh, I can, uh, I can claim one of my prizes here. It's gonna be some more meat and some humans. So some more food, but also more people to eat the food. Newcomers, Pervin Runebeak, Royal Stormwalker. These people have been sent here by the Crown. Which group do you want to stay, Viceroy? The others will continue on to the next settlement. So do I want a lizard and a beaver or a lizard and a human? This one's bringing some stuff I need and this one's bringing less stuff I need. So let's accept these guys because they're bringing some stuff that I need. I don't know when they arrive exactly. Oh, I need to assign somebody to collect this clay. So let's grab a lizard and a human. Stick them in there. Oh, it looks like we've opened this glade. What is this? A root deposit. I gather with the stonecutter's camp? Really? Interesting. Alright, so the question is... Should I... Okay, so I can move this. So I don't need to build a new one. If I want to have a woodcutter's camp here, for instance, I don't know what the roots are for yet, so I'm just going to stick one here. The same camp, and then I can mark these trees for cutting. Well, that's really nice and convenient, so I don't have to, like, go through the process of, like, deconstructing something, reconstructing a new one, and then reassigning workers to it. I can just move the one that I've got. It makes this game I'm gonna be much more agile than I'm used to in being things like this. Cog says that, that this this game seems interesting, but uh, he's more interested in uh, in Timberborn. Well, certainly as a game representing beavers, uh, Timberborn definitely is, is is leaning a lot harder into the whole beaver angle. Um, and I really do like the way that it's um, that it's built around a fluid a fluid simulator. There's just a lot of really fun things you can do there, but. I'm still interested in this game, too. Like, it feels a little bit... It's actually starting to remind me a bit of Northgard. Um, I haven't seen any combat in this game yet, so it might not have everything that Northgard has, but the sense of spreading out from glade to glade definitely has a Northgard vibe to it. A glade event. It's a destroyed camp in the wilderness. So if we have five vegetables, we can get some new people from here. Okay, yeah, let's assign some wor a worker to this. Uh... Let's assign multiple workers to this and then choose a reward. So we either get new people or we get some amber to send to... Let's send some amber to the Citadel because I don't know what that is. 
and it makes me curious. Okay, this seems like a scary glade. It contains a threat, but also rewards. Okay, let's let's open up a few more of these glades first. Interesting. So these guys all have a little. Each population of characters has got this green bar. I don't know how to increase it. Okay, this looks like it's got it's gotten all the clay. It's got nothing to do. So let's try. Oh, because I've got it selected, it's showing me other things like that it can interact with. So let's move it over here, and now it can go after these roots. By the way, you notice it's raining. Uh, we've got lightning striking everywhere. Hopefully, that's not actually going to be a problem. Okay, I can see that the water is, like, the boundary of my territory. Alright, so, now that we've cut through to this glade, let's move over here. I'm not sure I'm ready for the threat yet, so let's move this over here, and then cut through this, and cut through that. Open up these areas. I am Fenwick agrees that the, the the moving feature in this game is really nice. Uh, that that he hates having to build like a bunch of you know redundant multiple buildings in order to to spread out what they can do across the map. Yeah, no, I I agree. This is this is a pretty cool, and it's one of those things where it's so ingrained in the genre that you have to deconstruct and rebuild things. That constructing things is a fairly permanent action. That uh, it's even almost hard to to think about. Let's see, what does it say? A scavenger's camp. It's almost hard to think of solutions like that. Ooh, okay. So it seems like the lizards are my least happy population. So let's make a lizard house. And then can we also build just a regular shelter for other characters? Let's see what this does. If we've got one specialized lizard house, which is using two bricks that I made. Okay, looks like I've still got some clay, but they're all they're working on planks right now. I've already got 20 planks, though. I feel like maybe once they're done with these planks, maybe I should stop having them make planks. Maybe we should have them make bricks and fabric now. We haven't done that yet. And it looks like, basically, they're probably just going to keep making planks until I tell them to do something else. Because planks is at the top of the list, maybe? So we'll see if the workshop starts making fabric and bricks now. Because we do, I think, have what it takes. Yeah, we've got... We do, Oh, wait. We might need more of this. Where was... Okay, we've got two bricks... Oh, we've got no clay. We might need to collect more plant materials. How do we collect plant materials? Is that gotten from the roots, maybe? No, that, that gets something else. Can we get it from this? I can't see what this says. Why is it... It says, oh, 20% chance of getting roots. Okay. Where do I get plant fibers otherwise okay so we got a shelter here it's got three residents in it so I guess and this has got two lizards I think I have increased the lizards happiness there their, their resolve so I should probably build more of these things um, I feel like oh good we've been, made some bricks and fabric so I think we've actually satisfied that order let's deliver it, get some stuff out of it. I don't yet have an ancient tablet. They can be found in dangerous glades. That's where I need to go next. Well, what is this? The Queen's Envoy says I need to pick a cornerstone. Uh, okay, so an exploration contract. They'll want a detailed map of the region. It will supply anyone willing to help. Gain 20 reeds and 20 whatevers clay for every discovered glade. Okay, or carpenter's tools. Oh, workstation works faster. 
Okay, so if I grab this, then I've got kind of a new objective, which is let's explore as many glades as possible, which is something I'm already doing. So, all right, anyway, I feel like I should probably build more shelters. Oh, wait, I can, oh, I can make a clothier. They can make coats, manuscripts, and luxury goods. Okay, I don't feel like I'm quite ready for that yet. I think... I think I want a scavenger's camp, actually. Oh! The scavengers are the ones that can turn the flowers into... into plant... whatever. Plant matter. So, let's build one of those. I don't know. One thing I'm not sure of is if I've got... Oh, hey! We just opened this up. I can't always tell if I've got people available to do things. What is this? A forager's camp can collect whatever this nonsense is. Okay, let's get some new people this time, because I want to build more stuff. Oh, we opened this up too, and it's got... Is, what is that, clay? It's clay. Okay, let's move the stone cutter so that... It's covering both the roots and the clay. Oh, wait, they just finished the roots. Okay, great. Well, go after the clay then. So, yeah, so we'll have the scavenger's hut right here, scavenger's camp. Let's assign some folks to it. A human and a lizard. And now we've kind of exhausted our population. By the way, I'm noticing that there's some hostility that's growing up here. I don't know what that what's going to happen once that hostility gets high enough. Um, but, yeah, so it looks like... Let's focus on plant fiber first. Well, it looks like they're going to focus on that first anyway, so... Yeah, whatever. Let's just do everything. Um, oh, is that a bunch of clay right here? Bunch of clay. Okay, let's get this clay first, but then we'll, we'll come over da down here and get this clay. I never, didn't even notice that before. Oh, it looks like we've opened this up. There's some stuff to forage for. All right, so we could probably move the woodcutter's camp to be over here. I love how just accessible this is. Like, yeah, let's, we don't have to get those trees anymore. Like, most of, like, they didn't have to tutorialize a lot in this game. Most of what I've been doing is stuff that I could just sort of figure out by feeling my way through the UI. That's hard to do in a game of the, in this genre. It's very, very easy to make things difficult to understand because there's just so much going on. All right, I should probably build some more housing. And I've got four lizards, and so let's build another lizard hut. Beside the other lizard hut. Chopping out these trees. So I'm thinking I'll chop, chop my way into this glade. Then I'll chop through here to the threat glade. And see what happens when we're threatened. Uh, so, Director Cosmic, I'm sorry my French isn't good enough to understand that sentence. Uh, you're asking me, is there something? But I don't know what a uh, Russo de Cas Castor is, so you'll have to um, you'll have to explain that to me. A Russo de Castor? Uh, yeah, not sure. I guess, yeah, I don't really need to chop down these trees anymore. I can unmark them. So this woodcutter is just ambiently grabbing trees. Uh, I think I should probably dig into that glade, and I'm not sure if it's got the range, so let's move it so it's real close. We'll cut through here. So far, I haven't really felt the urge to speed this game up. There's just a lot going on. How is this forager camp doing? This forager camp is finding lots of food over here. Um, oh, oh! Stonecutter's camp has no deposits. Sweet. Let's move this over here so it can reach that clay. Not the most efficient in the world. Oh, newcomers are waiting? Oh, newcomers. Okay. 
Okay, so now I know, now that I know how to collect these things, I'm more interested in the people with copper bars. And they're lizards, which I know I can house effectively. So, let's get some more lizards in here. We should build another lizard house. Um, I'm not sure how appropriate it is for me to just have a lizard quarter over here. Uh, that might be a little problematic. But we should also build a regular shelter for other people. Um... So yeah, I'm wondering if I should move a for or like maybe build a second foragers camp over here. My food is going up, which is good. But yeah, let's build a second foragers camp. If for no other reason than to have the flexibility to be able to move them around. All right, so I'm not actually sure. Well, like to what degree the things I'm doing are helping the resolve of these characters. Okay, so I do have a clothier now. I don't have enough fabric. How can I make sure I get enough fabric? I guess I need to make sure that I'm getting enough. Okay, so yeah, so we're collecting tons and tons of eggs. But let's take a break from eggs. Because we need more plant fiber. Oh, but I think this character has to walk whenever they're done gathering eggs. I bet they're going to come back here. I bet they're going to have to take a long way around to get to these because I put these houses in the way. So let me... Oh, you can't move shelters. You can only move the work buildings. Interesting. Ein Fenwick points out that there is actually a little red, green arrow that appears here when these uh, different populations uh, get an advantage that makes them happier. But it it is ephemeral, and so there isn't really a uh, something that that tells me, like, gives me a breakdown of what has been working in the past. So yeah, this character does have to walk all the way around. So I think that in the interest of um, efficiency, I'll just move it so the only thing it can do is go after these flowers. And that should give me enough plant fibers to work with that I can start making cloth again and then I can build a clothier. Oh, it looks like we've unlocked this and it's got roots that are just out of range. So let's move that guy to be right there so they can pick up the roots and the clay. And then... Let's move the woodcutter's camp just a little bit closer. And let's get real close, but not all the way to breaking into this threat place. Now, I don't know. Okay, it looks like the gold ones are the ones they can reach and the gray ones are the ones they can't. So let's move this even closer, but without getting in the way that's the problem. I don't want to get in the way of the stone cutter, at least not too much. So let's put it here. I think the stone cutter is still going to be able to make it to the roots just fine. Uh, they're mostly going after clay anyway. Okay, we are gathering plant fibers. Um, I don't know if we're making fabric. Where does fabric usually show? Aha, we got four fabric. Okay, good. I think that means that I can make the clothier. Uh, Sure, why not? Right here. Okay, so this is my main storage right here. So putting a factory type thing near the storage is probably a good move. In fact, I probably should have actually moved this over to be closer to the, even closer. Okay. This might, oh wait, nobody's here yet. Let's see if we can assign a human, wait, no. We get a human here. Let's put a lizard there. So we'll be foraging for whatever this is. Insects to eat. Delicious, delicious insects. I wonder if that'll actually help, like, if different foods are more appealing. Oh, holy crap. We've got so much going on. Okay, so hold on. We've got newcomers. Ooh, leather. I don't have any leather. Yeah, let's accept these guys. We've got a cornerstone. Oh, so we can just get a bunch of eggs every minute? 
or a bunch of fiber delivered. Well, you know what? We are just about to open up a clothier, so let's pick the fiber every minute. We are no longer making planks, and so our planks are going down. It might be worthwhile to make a second workshop. Just so that I can focus them on working two di different things. Then there's a, a small encampment up here. Oh, this waiting for my action. Okay, let's assign some people to it. And something for the Citadel, whatever that is. And then, oh, I've got some orders that I've completed. Oh, wait, have I? Oh, no, it just wants me to complete some orders. So I need to make an ancient tablet or get one. Um... Oh, right, Dangerous Glades. That's the thing that I'm, I haven't done yet. So I'm slowly working my way towards this Dangerous Glade and into this minor one. So I guess I'm just going to keep... Yeah, I've got people assigned. I'm going to keep working on it. Uh, what was this again? Oh, this is the Clothier. Okay, so let's assign whoever's available to this. And then we can make coats out of fabric. We can make manuscripts, and we can make luxury goods. Well, I can't make these, so I might as well leave them on, because it won't happen. So we'll be turning our fabric into coats. We don't have any fabric right now. So let's put a lizard here. And a beaver? I don't know. And let's just be making fabric in this place. And then let's not be making fabric here. Let's go planks and bricks. And so now we'll have dedicated fabric makers, allegedly. There we go. Now it's running. It's interesting. I think that these these workshops, they're using rain to turn a water wheel, which is interesting. Oh, gotcha. Uh, so, uh, Director Cosmic was ask, was asking when I when I read that French thing um, uh, that he said he was asking you if this is another Beaver stream, basically. And so, yes, this is this game does have beavers in it, just like Timberboard, though it's using them very differently. Actually, is that a, is this what a beaver looks like? Is this a beaver? They've got like a big old big old hat on their head. I guess it's because of the rain. It's interesting the world building they're doing here. Like they're just making it so incredibly rainy all the time. And it doesn't seem like that's really a gameplay thing. It seems like it's just an atmospheric thing. So all the characters are wearing big hats and hoods and and the water wheels are being turned by the rain, but as far as I know, there isn't another gameplay effect from it. I guess we'll have to see. Director Cosmic is very excited that there are beavers in this game. Okay, we've opened up this glade. It's got just a root deposit, so whatever, not a big deal. Um, okay, so I think we're fairly on autopilot right now, so really getting to this place is the thing we've got left to do. So I think for the first time, I might actually accelerate time to make this happen faster. And actually, we might we might be almost there. So, let's cut through here and see what happens if we open a dangerous glade. Is something going to rampage through my community and just destroy everything or what? Drizzle year three. Next clearance in 33, 32. I'm not sure what this means. There's a lot. Of, I feel like, you know, things like the rain. There's a lot of stuff where it feels like, oh, maybe this is superficial. There, it feels like there's game mechanics I don't understand yet. A lot of them. But by the way, I really, really love these arrows up here. There, I wish that more games in this genre did just sort of casually report to you which things you're running out of and which things you're increasing on because sometimes it's like it takes a lot of attention to keep track of what is what you're running out of okay 
So a dangerous glade has got an ancient shrine in it. It's got a threat. Disturbing can have a grave consequence. Okay, so let's... Oh, I need a beaver in there and a lizard. So I need to take a lizard out, a beaver out of something. So let's make that a lizard. Send a beaver. So do I have to just like investigate this quickly before this bad thing happens? Or is this bad thing going to happen periodically? And I just need to resolve it before it happens? Oh, crap. Oh, crap. It's going to murder three of my people. Oh, no. No. Ah. They're just dead. Oh, that's terrible. And I couldn't do anything about it. Oh, but I can't. So it'll be five minutes until the next one. So maybe if I can meet all of its requirements. Simple tools. Do I have simple tools? Um, yes, I do have simple tools. We're using them. So, okay. So in the future, I need to be aware of the fact that this is going to require simple tools so that I don't try to engage with these things when I don't have enough. That sounds like that would be sort of the worst case scenario. Is if I opened one of these and I did not have the resources to tackle them. But yeah, okay, so it seems like what I want to do is build up the infrastructure that I know I can rush resources if I need to. Okay, yeah, I think I see how this works. So this area is pretty well explored. Um, so I can move this woodcutter to work in a place where there's just plenty of wood around, but I'm not trying to use them as an exploration tool anymore. Now what's this? Nothing can be sacrificed in this hearth. Interesting. So does that mean... Oh, it means that I... Did I run out of wood? Okay, so apparently they need to be burning things all the time in order for... Oh, and we... Apparently they killed the person who was manning this thing. Okay, so because I let my wood cutter kind of languish a little bit, I think we ran out of wood... Do we have a lot of planks? How many planks do we have? Which one of these is planks? We're using planks still. And we're replacing them by sucking out all of our wood. So if I allow them to burn planks, that kind of solves this a little bit, uh, at least short term. But it would be better if they weren't eating my fancy resource. That means I need to stay on top of getting the planks. It looks like I'm just making a ton of bricks, but not as many planks. So I'm going to devote this thing full time to planks now, uh, but that means it's going to need to get plenty of wood, and maybe that means I need another woodcutter camp, or at least one that's closer. Yeah, it seems like transporting wood to the storage is going to be tough in these places. So let me move my woodcutter's camps again to get them closer to storage. At least that was the one that was problematic. Get that one closer to storage. This one doesn't need to be here anymore. So yeah, let's get them all as close to storage as possible. So that I'm collecting wood really quickly. And then are any of them under... Wait, this... That's not a... That's a scavenger's camp. What am I thinking? That's not a woodcutter. I mean, it's still useful, but... No, let's put that back there. Um, I meant to grab a woodcutter. Do I only have the two woodcutters? Maybe I only have the two woodcutters. The thing I don't know is how many unemployed people I have. Oh, wait a minute. A lizard left due to low resolve? And my health went down? And a beaver died? And oh, I've got so many things going on here. Okay, first off... Let's deliver this. So we've completed. I won. My village is secure, but there's one more test of your skills. What's that? 
Oh, what? Okay, so this is where... This is different from a game like, say, RimWorld. This is not, like I was saying earlier, this is not a long-term colony building sim. This is a thing where you win short-term colony building challenges, succeed, and then move on. And the overarching structure of the game is a bigger operation. It's like the queendom or whatever is, is sending you out to, 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 do all these, to do multiple village rather than a single village. Okay, so now, now it's going to teach me about revol resolve. That last one wasn't about resolve. This one is about resolve. Keeping it exceptionally high will grant passive reputation over time. Okay. Satisfying your villagers' needs with complex food, homes, and services will increase their resolve. And, oh, there's a whole window where I can expand to figure out their needs. They all have a different mix of needs. It's hard to please everyone all of the time. Farmers can plant only on farm fields, and those can only be built on fertile soil. Is that what this grass is? Crops are planted in the first season, drizzle, and can be harvested during the second, clearance. So this is going to get more complicated. Build a farm, harvest grain, and serve some ale in a tavern. So I think that was something like that was going on in the back. I saw ale in the previous community. So it feels like they might have just sort of like automated and not made me deal with some of this stuff in the background. But now I actually have to figure it out. But we're starting on a new topic now. So we should probably wrap up this episode and start a new one. So uh, please subscribe to my channel. I'll put a button there for you. I'm going to make another video right now about this game. And so click on that if you want to keep going. And those of you, of course, who are watching me live, we're just going to keep going now.